Hey guys, I'm so excited um, to welcome you guys back from Christmas break. Um, thank you so much for being so patient with us with the weather and all the changes that are happening, but I'm so excited to have you back for Nursing 112. It's going to be a great semester. Um, we, the point of this video is to go over the syllabus, okay, probably to answer some burning questions that you have. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the syllabus. The first thing that I want you guys to know about Nursing 112 is that we do meet on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 9 to 11.40 in Purdue 123. Okay, so again, every Tuesday and Wednesday from 9 to 11.40, we'll be in Purdue 123. For you guys, you guys will have a clinicals on Thursday, 06.30 to 18.30. And do plan on being there from 06.30 to 18.30. You will be there for the full 12 hours. Okay, the next thing on the first page is my best way to contact me. And the best way to contact me is holidayd at cravencc.edu. Go ahead and save that. Um, I always have my phone on me or I'm always on campus and so I always have access to my email so that's actually the best way to get a hold of me is through my email going on to page three of the syllabus just like last semester to be able to progress um, into third semester you do have to um, get an 80 in this course okay so an 80 um, which is a B is required for you to progress from this course all right um, so really what you guys are probably interested in is what does this course mean? What What is the bulk of the course? And the bulk of the course is the four unit tests that you guys will have. So you have four unit tests. Um, they'll be made up of 50 questions each, okay? Um, the difference, um, test will start at nine o'clock. You will have one hour, five minutes to get to take the test one hour five minutes that's a little bit different this semester the reason why you have one hour five minutes is for you to be able to um, kind of mimic the NCLEX the NCLEX gives you one minute 30 seconds for each question and so that's what I will do the other thing that is the big difference is once you submit you will not be able to go back meaning question one leads to question two which leads to question three and you will not be able to go back so you have a minute and 30 seconds per question and once you commit to that question you then have to move on okay so that's going to be the biggest difference again i'm not trying to be mean i'm trying to prepare you for the NCLEX and that's the way the NCLEX is once you submit an answer you move on okay so it's going to be the same thing this semester Another thing that's going to be a little bit different, the only thing that you'll be permitted to bring into the classroom is a pencil or a pen. There will be absolutely no book bags, no laptops, no water bottles, no hats, no scarves, no um, watches, nothing. Okay, you literally will come in as you are with no additional um, scarves or hats or anything like that okay no watches again no water bottles nothing the only thing you need to come into class with is with a pencil or a pen okay I will provide you a scrap piece of paper a calculator if you should need it um, a mouse and a laptop you may use the dividers I have no problem with dividers and you also may use um, headphones or um, earplugs but the earplugs cannot be electronical okay they can have no cords they cannot be wireless they really can only be those cheap foam ones that you get okay so um, just know that so you can use earplugs but they have to be the foam ones nothing electronical Okay, final exam. Your final exam is worth 15% of your total grade and it is cumulative and no, you will not see the questions before. They are all new questions, okay? But we will prepare for the final. We have a class period. I think it's Hesse and then preparing for the final. So we'll um, have a little bit more questions about that. It is a 100 question final, okay? Pre-work. This is a little bit different than last semester too. So you guys have pre-work. What is pre-work? Pre-work is mostly quizzes, okay? They're usually about 10 question quizzes. Um, they are not timed, and what I ask, this is how I ask you to prepare for class. I ask that you read the material, and by read, I mean really skim the material. Um, pick up what you don't already know, because a lot of this you might already know. Once you skim the material, take the quiz. Um, close book, close notes, okay? You will then get a score. Once you get a score, then you can go back and take the quiz again. At this time, I then want you to open your book, open your notes, and really then dig into what you didn't understand, 
Okay, so with each pre-assignment, you'll get two attempts for the quiz. They're not timed, but again, it's one question moved to the next, you can't go back, okay? Um, there is one assignment where it is um, form, it's a form that you have to fill out and submit to me, okay? Um, but most of them are quizzes, but again, you do have that one that is a form, um, and that is your respiratory, and that's due the day of your first test, okay? Again, if we have more questions on unit tests, final exam, or pre-work, we can do that on, um, we can discuss that on Tuesday, okay? HESI, we have to do HESI, and I love HESI because HESI really gives you, um, it really determines where you're at. If you were going to take the NCLEX today, where would you be at? Would you be able to pass the NCLEX? And of course, we don't teach you to pass tests, but um, you do have to pass the NCLEX to be able to um, get your nursing license. So of course, that is pretty important, um, and that's what we want to do, right? So we will take a HESI and it is scheduled for you guys. Um, the difference is our HESI score is gonna be a little bit different. So if you look at this, it will show you how HESI is going to be scored this semester. Again, just like last semester, hopefully none of you need to remediate, but if we do need to remediate, um, this tells you exactly how many hours. So if you get an 850, you have to do one hour of remediation. Now, if you do 59 minutes of remediation, you don't get the 10 points. You have to do a full hour. So I suggest doing an hour 15, an hour 30. That extra practice is not gonna hurt you and it's gonna guarantee that you get that 10 points. Again, um, if you do have to remediate, um, it is due by the 27th of February. Um, and if you do not do the full amount, 10 points will be deducted from your final average, okay? Moving on to um, section or page five. Page five, clinical is pass or fail, satisfactory or unsatisfactory. The difference that we have with clinical this semester is that it is a 12 hour clinical, okay? So you will have 12 hours. You will be expected to be there at 6.30 in the morning and you'll be expected to stay there until 6.30 at night or 18.30. Um, the other difference, paperwork is also due, this is the same as last semester, paperwork is due um, before clinical ends. Now, if clinical ends and you don't have your paperwork done, that is between you and the instructor, but you do have to talk to your instructor and keep that communication line open, and they will be able to determine if you have to take an unsatisfactory or if maybe they'll give you some extended time, maybe because of patient care um, didn't allow you um, to maybe fill out the paperwork. Now, the paperwork is 11 pages. I do know that's a lot, but remember, you have a 12-hour clinical. Um, the cool thing about the paperwork this semester is the first page is not a graded page. This page is allows you to have a space to write your notes or to write your report during shift, shift summary or shift, I'm sorry, during shift report, okay? Um, you didn't have a space before, so now you have a space. Then Ms. McBride made this page, and there's some critical thinking questions there. And those critical thinking questions are going to help you with your critical thinking journal. So this is something new. Every single week, you have to do a critical thinking journal. Now, for the first week, it's going to be up to your clinical instructor whether they um, um, want you to do a critical thinking journal or not. Um, my best assumption is probably not since you're not going to be taking care of patients, but again, that is up to your clinical instructor. So verify with your clinical instructor if there's a clinical um, thinking journal due this week. Critical thinking journals are pass or fail or unsatisfactory or satisfactory, okay? Um, what satisfactory or unsatisfactory means? Um, they are due Saturday by 5 o'clock. Now your clinical instructor will be the one grading it. So if you need an extension, you need to communicate with them um, before it's due. Again, don't be afraid of us. Let us know. We know things happen, so let us know before things happen so that we can give you an extension if necessary. Um, again, it is gonna be up to your clinical instructor and there is a possibility they might not give you an extension and if that is the case, then it will be considered unsatisfactory. Again, if you've made no contact with your clinical instructor and you do not turn in your critical thinking journal Saturday by 5 o'clock, 1700, um, you, will be a, you will get an unsatisfactory for the clinical, okay? So the clinical paperwork is due at the end of clinical and your clinical thinking journal is due 
um, Saturday at 1700 okay and those are what make up your satisfactory and unsatisfactory for the clinical day okay so what is a critical thinking journal basically it is um, something that you are going to submit to Moodle okay um, it is a minimum of a hundred and fifty words and what you are going to do is you're going to describe at least two solutions to a situation that you um, did um, and discuss the advantage or disadvantage of each suggestion and solution okay so where did you use critical thinking um, some of the critical thinking might be you came on and you had a patient that was on four liters of O2 that has COPD that does not wear oxygen at home you were able to at 8 o'clock vitals they were 96 percent so you wean them down to three liters 20 minutes you checked again you wean them down and they were still 96 percent so you're able to wean them down to two liters you encourage incentive barometer and turn and cough um, and then um, by the end of the shift you were able to wean them on room air where they were 94% or above okay that is a critical thinking journal um, that is just one scenario but again minimum of 150 words has to be due um, by Saturday at 1700 and again your clinical instructor will be the one grading it so if you do need an extension or you need any clarification they are the ones that you need to clarify with because they'll be the ones grading it okay another difference um, so um, for attendance there's two attendance there's attendance in class and then there's attendance for clinical attendance for class is that you are expected to um, come to 90% of the class I think I did the math and it was like 264 minutes or something like that it was basically one and a half class periods so if you miss more than one and a half class periods you will fail the course okay again we do know things come up so if you have something that comes up you do have to let us know if you can know beforehand or if it's an illness or something we will need a doctor's note um, or something to show why you were out of class okay um, I have sign-in sheets the sign-in sheets are gonna be a little bit different than last semester you're gonna sign in and you're gonna sign out if you were late you'll put the time that you came in if you're if you're early leaving you'll just put the time that you um, signed that you had to leave it is okay to leave early it's okay to come late I don't love it but that is up to you you guys are adults okay and so I know things happen um, the biggest thing is we just have to keep track of it okay um, if you do leave early or you forget to sign out for the course then it will be considered an absence okay so it's very important that you sign into the class and that you sign out of the class okay and again if there's any questions we'll discuss it on Tuesday so write your questions down we'll discuss it on Tuesday okay um, if you are late three um, three class periods it is considered an absence okay so late is 15 greater than 15 minutes if you're late three times again it is um, considered I'm sorry it's not considered absence It's considered um, one hour class missed okay so just don't be late come on time but be safe okay um, you will be um, withdrawn from the course or receive a D if you miss more than 10% of the class okay so it is very important that you come to class all right a difference also from last semester you are expected to attend a hundred percent of clinical okay again I'm gonna say that a hundred percent of clinical if you have to miss clinical for any reason you have to get permission from the lead instructor um, and we would prefer it to be prior we do know illnesses happen so let's say you're sick we do not want you to come to clinical sick what I will expect from you if you do miss a clinical is a doctor's note you will have to do the ALE which is a 12-hour ALE um, before you can return to clinical so if you miss a day of clinical and it's related to an illness I will need a doctor's note that you were ill you will have to uh, submit a 12-hour ALE that you'll get from me you'll have to submit that and I will grade it and this all has to be done before you can return to clinical on um, the following Thursday okay now 
if you are going to be ill, or well, hopefully you're not ill, if you are going to be sick, um, what you do have to do, you have to let me know via my email. So it is very important that you save my email, okay? You also have to let your clinical instructor know, and you have to let the clinical agency know at least an hour in advance, okay? If you do not do all three of those, then you get to write a five page paper and it's written right here for you let me see if I can find it really fast for some reason I can't find it real fast but you will have to write a five page paper about professionalism so not only will you miss your clinical not only will you have to do an ALE not only will you have to show proof why you missed your clinical but now you get to write a five page paper so make sure you let the lead instructor myself know if you're gonna miss clinical let your clinical instructor know and let the facility know Okay. Um, again, the ALE is due 24 hours prior to your clinical. So it's due to me at 6.30 on Wednesday. Okay. So if you do miss a clinical, your clinical, your ALE will be due to me 6.30 Wednesday. Okay. Again, if you do not do the ALE, you cannot go to um, clinical, you will miss two clinicals, and you will be withdrawn from the course or receive a D in the course. So make sure you show up to clinical each and every time prepared and ready to take care of these great patients that want your care. Okay? Tardy. Let's do some tardies, okay? Let's just not be tardy and we don't have to worry about this. If you arrive within 15 minutes of the scheduled time, you are considered tardy three tardies will be in absence. And if you are tardy three times, so if you come at 0646 three times, you will have to do a 12 hour ALE. It will be considered an absence, okay? The first time that you are tardy, you will be sitting in my office and we'll do a strategic plan with you. The second time you will be placed on probation, you'll be back in my office and we'll be updating your plan, okay? And then again, the third time will be considered an absence and um, you will um, have to do the 12 hour ALE that will be due to me the Wednesday before you can go back to clinical, okay? So let's just not be tardy because none of us want to have to do this and we, we don't wanna to have to be the mean ones, so just be safe. Again, we know things happen. So if there's a flat tire, if there's a, a car accident, if there's something going on, let us know. But if you can't let us know and you don't let us know, then we don't know and we have to follow the policy that is written for us, okay? If you're greater than 15 minutes late to clinical, okay? Um, so, sorry, before it was six, I'm sorry, so the tardies are from 6.30 to um, 6.45. If you come at 6.46 or after, you will be sent home and you will have to do 12 hour ALE. The reason is, is because you probably already missed report and it's not fair for the nurse to have to redo report. You have to be on time, okay? So if you show up at 6.46, you will be sent home, you will have to do a 12 hour ALE. Now let's say you come to um, clinical and you get sick, okay, sometimes that happens. Um, the instructor might send you home. That's fine, okay. We hope you feel better. Um, but you will have to do an ALE for the time that you miss. So if you miss four hours of clinical, you will do a four hour ALE. Um, if you leave clinical early, um, because your clinical instructor sends you home, just send me an email, let me know, and I will send you the ALE to make up for that time. Okay, and again, it is still due the Wednesday before you go back to clinical. Um, oh, here it is on page eight. It is a five page double spaced 12 font paper about accountability and professionalism for the nursing student. And again, this is if you don't let us know that you are going to be, um, late or absent from clinical within that hour and you don't let your lead instructor know, you don't let your um, instructor know and you don't let the clinical agency know, then you will be doing ALE plus writing that five page paper. All right, so the weather guidelines, we all know about this, don't we? So you guys know, um, you guys will get an email. We'll also be on the website, um, www.cravencc.edu. Now if there's a two hour delay, 
um, what will happen is we will not have clinical until 10 o'clock okay so two hour delay is from 8 not starting from 6 30 so please hear me again if if we're on a two hour delay or like yesterday we were on a three hour delay it would be from three hours from eight o'clock okay if you have any questions you can always email me but again if it's three hours delay it would be 11 o'clock is when we start clinical and yes we would start clinical okay guys we would start at 11 o'clock HIPAA HIPAA is humongous and um, if HIPAA is broken um, you will get an F in the course okay so um, confidentiality is so important um, that we follow okay so going on to page 10 instructor specific expectations recording recording is the biggest thing um, the thing that I do want to let you guys know about recording is that you guys can record me I'm perfectly okay with you guys recording my course but you have to get written permission prior um, you have to get permission for each day that you record me um, and when you do record me it cannot be shared without permission again if there's someone that's absent for class and you're like hey I recorded it can I share it just send me an email and let me know I'll be more than happy to let you share it but it has to be with permission if you come into my office and we do a strategic um, student plan and you want to record that again that's fine it has to be written permission okay so you have to have written permission to record me and you have to have written permission to um, share my recording okay that is the biggest thing second thing is when you're in class you're in class okay um, you guys have paid a lot of money to um, get to know the very little information that I have to share with you guys and so what I ask that you guys do I don't mind if you have your laptops out and you're following along on your PowerPoints I know these PowerPoints are humongous and we'll talk about those in just a second but I do ask that you don't Facebook I ask that you don't text I ask that you you really give me your all when you're in my class um, what can I say about that um, this is a difficult course and I promise you I will give you my all so that you guys understand the material. I will not spoon feed you, but if you want to have sweat, blood, and tears to know about this material, I'm going to put the same thing in so that you guys understand it. Okay? I There's no tricking you. I do not want to trick you. I want you to be able to take care of my children one day. I want you to be able to take care of my family and I want you to understand these concepts so that you can critically think later in life. Okay? So if you put that in, I'm going to give it to you. So I ask that when you're in class that you give me your attention, that you're not on Facebook, that you're not shopping, unless you're shopping for a gift for me, that you're not shopping. Okay? Um, I do understand that some of you guys have sick kids, that you guys have things that you need to do. So if you need to have your phone on to get on vibration, to get text or something, that, that's every once in a while. But if it's every day in class, it's not okay. Give me, give me, your, give me your attention. I'm going to give you my attention, so give me your attention. Um, I believe that is it for the syllabus that we need to, um, nope, nope, a few other things. On page 14, accommodation for disability. Guys, if there is any special needs that you have for class, I will be more than happy to, um, to comply with those. I want this learning environment to be great for everybody because I want all of you to succeed and I want to see all of you cross that stage, okay? Um, but to have those you do have to go through the academic skill center okay so the academic uh, skill center directors who you would need to contact and they'll be able to help you with any learning needs that you have and I will comply with those also withdrawal procedure that is on page 15 please review that um, I hope that you would come into my office I hope that we could talk about that before that happens again um, I'm hoping that we all succeed in this course because I'm so excited now my powerpoints I know you guys have looked at my powerpoints you guys are like oh lord um, what did I do I gave you the powerpoints um, that the manufacturer or the book gave me okay the publisher gave me I gave you every single PowerPoint you might not need every single PowerPoint. So what I suggest, how do I suggest that you study for this, um, this course? The pretest is going to make you at least skim the material before you come to class, okay? Unless you just want to zero on that. You might be smart enough to maybe do better on it, but um, you do need to skim the material before you come to class. You will take your quiz or do your pre-assignment before you come to class. Again, those close 9 o'clock class a day. Um, you do your pre-assignment, you come to class. What I suggest is that you have your um, 
that you review the PowerPoints before coming to class. And then when you come to class, there will be some that I've already skipped over. I have cut from mine. And um, if you feel like you can cut them from yours, go ahead and cut them. Um, but they're great PowerPoints, and I might take some of the test questions or material from those PowerPoints. Um, I might be covering it in a different way, but if that helps you study, then leave them, um, if that makes sense. Um, meaning a lot of the ones that I cut might be nursing diagnosis, but nursing diagnosis might be on your test, but it's applying the material that we're going over. So I'm going over the material and on my tests, you'll be applying it. Um, what's an example? Um, I might give you an ABG on the first test. And when you get that ABG, you have to tell me the diagnosis that goes along with it. So like COPD, okay, COPD, you might expect that CO2 to be elevated. You might expect the um, bicarb to be elevated too as a compensation. You don't know what this means yet, but you will pretty shortly. Um, so I will give you the knowledge, but then you have to, um, you will then have to apply it on the test questions. So don't get overwhelmed by the PowerPoints. Again, once you study them, once you come to my lecture, you might be able to cut them all together. Another thing with it is you might want to write notes in the note page of the PowerPoint and just print out the outline if that helps you study. Um, I, um, I don't know the best way for you to study, but those are some of my suggestions. Um, what are we going to do? We are going to have PowerPoints. We are going to play games. Um, we are going to do some case studies and whatever other suggestions you guys have for me, give them to me because um, I want this to be a successful learning environment for all of you. All right, guys, that's all I got off the top of my head. We went over the syllabus. If you feel comfortable, please sign the um, syllabus um, page. If you don't feel comfortable and you guys have some burning questions, um, Miss McBride is more than welcome to call me and we can Skype and we can um, answer some questions that we have. Um, other than that, I'm so excited to get started on clinical. I'm so excited to um, start with you this semester and I look forward to um, learning with you. All right, guys, have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.